Hi, everyone. Welcome to another uh, awesome Zoom call we have with one of our partners in crime. Uh, I want you to meet Meredith Miller. She is from Shimano. Um, she's bringing you a ton of information. I know as our crew, we have a very diverse group from beginners to veterans. No question is a stupid question and no complicated question is too complicated for Meredith. She knows everything. <laughs> well, if I don't have the answer, I'll find it for you. Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, so Meredith, if you could just start with introducing who you are and what you've done. I mean, I, I mean, your accomplishments are amazing. So it would just be great to kind of start there and then we can get into the presentation if that works. Sure, sure. So yeah, I'm Meredith. I am based in Boulder, Colorado, but I work for Shimano as the sports marketing, the road sports marketing manager. Um, and that means road is basically, you could call it skinny tire, you could call it drop bar. Um, it's basically anything that's not a flat bar. So that's road, gravel, cyclocross, and triathlon. So quite a diverse group of people um, that I work with as well. Um, and my background is actually from road racing. I started racing bikes in uh, 1998 <laughs> um, after, after playing soccer in college. So when I started racing bikes in 98, it was completely new to me. I raced for 10 years on the road and then picked up cyclocross uh, and was doing both road and cyclocross for about six years and then um, kind of reduced my road schedule and focused on cyclocross for the last couple of years. And during that time, lived in different parts of the world and um, it was also riding mountain bikes. Um, and, and when I lived overseas, I lived in Denmark and New Zealand, so I was racing full time in uh Europe and racing with the Danish team at the time and then came back to the U.S. and that's when I picked up cyclocross and and also have always ridden mountain bikes not I haven't done as much mountain bike racing and then of course over the last gosh probably close to 10 years even um started racing gravel I think my first gravel event would have been like at Grinduro um Quincy in, back in it was like 2017 or something like that. So it's it's been quite a while. Um, and um, officially retired from bike racing for me in 2016 and have been working in the bike industry between apparel and um, and then now at Shimano for almost three years since then. So I've been around um, bike racing for a couple decades and uh, whether it's the racing aspect or equipment or whatever, my husband also works in the bike industry. So we are bikes all the time. <laughs> so I feel like I have uh, a fair bit of knowledge from equipment to racing to just health, nutrition, mental, you know, um, health and in, in the sport and everything like that. So I always like to give back because so many people were instrumental in, in helping me through my career. So I definitely appreciate being able to do these kind of presentations and teach people whatever I can impart um, because there is a lot of information out there and there are so many questions to ask. So as Angela said, no, no question is a stupid question. So please, please ask questions and uh, we can even, you know, after the presentation is over, if you have any more questions, you can always send them to Angela to to pass along to me to help. I'm, that's that's what I I appreciate about that bike industry is that it is a pretty close knit family, so we're all here to help one another out, and I'm happy to be here to chat with you guys tonight. Awesome! Thank you so much. We're we're yeah. excited. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so in talking to Angela about what we were going to talk about tonight, it sounds like we could have gone a million different directions. Um, one of the things that Angela had mentioned was just um, why 12 speed? Why, you know, why Durace? Why Altegra? Why, you know, even 105? Um, why mechanical or DI2? Or, you know, what what gearing do you choose? What crank length do you choose? All the different things. And there's so there's so much minutia that we could you know really dive into that we don't have time to to get to tonight. So I'll kind of just give you a brief overview of um, like our Durace and Altegra, um, and then yeah, one of five is also another family, uh, you know, another group that um, kind of follows follows the Durace and Altegra um, families. So. 
um, how I, I can't see everybody who's on the call, I don't think, but how many people are actually on um, 12 speed Shimano? Um, and, and don't don't feel bad if you're not on Shimano, it's okay. okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, how many people are on 12 speed? Can well, I am. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we have about a dozen people on. I'm not sure. I'm okay. just going to go through people who've who've gone on. Lindsay might be on 12 speed. I'm not sure. Lindsay, are you on 12 speed? No, she's not. <laughs> okay, I might I be the only one the... right now. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. I'm I'm seeing the chat. So I see people's answers in the the chat. Great. So, um, so we actually launched 12 speed in 2021 um in the the middle of the pandemic it was insane it was crazy it was also um my first year on the job so it, it was wild um but you know uh shimano is known also for di2 which is double integrated it's a double integrated system it's um it is the electronic system. So, and if anyone's on, for those of you on SRAM, that's this basically the equivalent to Axis, um, or yeah. And um, when we when we launched it, one of the big things for us. Sorry, let me make sure I can move my slides here. Let's go. There we go. Um, we talk about. Uh, so with Shimano, our our technology. I mean, we we're a hundred plus year old company, so we've been a lot around for a long time. And Shimano has always been known for its engineering prowess, and we call this our you know science of speed when we launched this new um, Durace and, and Altegra twelve speed. And with that, we launched a lot of different new aspects to the 12 speed group. Um, we have a new platform, a new interface, a new drivetrain system, new wheel system and braking system. So I'll kind of go through each one of those very quickly. And if you have a question, please shout. Um, some of this does get, I tried to take out all the real technical stuff, but just, just briefly, um, Shimano offers the fastest shifting ever. Um, just from 11 speed to 12 speed, the front derailleur shifting improved by 45% and the rear derailleur shifting improved by 58%. It is extremely fast. It's it's crazy. So, um, I mean, you hardly even notice that you're shifting. It happens so fast. Uh, the Probably one of the most notable changes moving to from 11 speed to 12 speed was that we removed the wires in the front end. So our front end is now wireless, but our back end is still wired. So it's not a completely wireless system. However, it is much easier without having to deal with wires on the front end. So now there's just a wire that goes from your front derailleur to your battery, from your rear derailleur to, to your battery. You pretty much plug it in and forget it. Um, and But because we still use the battery, that is what helps the shifting maintain its, its high end speed. Um, in the rear derailleur, for anyone who's been using Shimano, um, you might be aware that you used to have a, a junction box, you used to have a Bluetooth um, connector. All of that is now integrated into the rear derailleur. So you don't have all these different bits and pieces, you know, uh, on different parts of your bike. It's all in, integrated into the rear derailleur, which is really nice. Um, you check your battery life there. It, uh, you charge your your um, rear derailleur there. It's or your battery there. It's it's great. Um, redefine or refined interface. Just it, we're talking about that front end again. You don't have any of those um, shifting wires or anything in the in the front end. For those of you who have integrated bikes, you don't even have to have your brake cables um, on the front end. So just super super clean um, front end of the bike. We made some improvements to the hoods where you have better ergonomics, better ability to, especially the people who like to kind of sit on top of the hoods. Um, there's a little bit more um, uh, room to kind of really hold on. And, um, you know, in the, it, it's crazy to see what we used to race on <laughs> um, and, and how short the tops of the hoods were. Um, and you just had really, if you're on bumpy roads or whatever, you always felt like your hands were going to come off the the shifters. Now we've got real, a really good grip. 
um, to hold your hands in place so that you feel really confident and comfortable riding over any kind of bumpy terrain. Again, cleaner cockpit with the wireless DI2 connection in the front. And if I'm going too fast, please stop me, slow me down. I just know there's there's a lot of information or whatever we can go through tonight. So just trying to get through it all. Um, and I would say the customization with the eTube app is probably one of the um, most underutilized uh, platforms that we offer. So with the eTube app, and you can do this with 11 speed too, you just have to have a, a PC or something available, but now with 12 speed, you can do it through the app. And this is where you can make all sorts of customizations. So with DI2, the fun thing is, is you can, you can adjust how quickly your, your rear derailleur is shifting. So you can tell it to go from like a turtle's pace to a rabbit's pace, you know, whatever, high speed to low speed. You can tell it that if I press and hold the button, it keeps shifting until I let go. Or you can tell it if I press and hold the button, I only want it to shift three times regardless of how long I'm holding the button. You can, and so on both sides, um, I, as I'm sure you're aware, there this is different than SRAM, but there are two buttons on both sides. There's you know the kind of bigger paddle and a smaller paddle for the front derailleur, for the front end shifting and the rear end shifting. You can customize how you want to use those buttons. So I actually, on my front derailleur side, I flip-flop how I want those buttons. I like to think of the big button as moving to my big chain ring for my front derailleur, right? Big, big, big button, big chain ring. So I actually change it from the default um, setting that comes with the whole system. So there are a lot of different ways you can customize things. You There are buttons on top of the shifters that you can set to scroll through your, your I don't know if it works with Wahoo, but I use a Garmin. So you can scroll through the different pages on your Garmin. Um, you can, there's just, there's endless ways to customize all the different parts of your DI2 system with the eTube app. So if you have a 12 speed system and you haven't used the app, I would highly recommend downloading that and going in and just playing around with things. You can even get into the nitty gritty of like, what, how many times are you shifting during a ride and what are the gears that you're typically using? So there's a lot of information that you can pull out of the YouTube app. So definitely recommend digging into that if you have the 12 speed system and download the YouTube app. Um, so that's the um, what we call the shifters or ST um, and it's the R9270. That's what those um, are referred to, the kind of part number. Um, so in with the 12 speed drivetrain uh, that we introduced a couple of years ago, we made some changes to the chainring options that we use for Durace. So Durace used to be 5339 used to be the biggest chain rings that we offered. We then moved to a 5440. We eliminated the 5339 and so we, then we dropped to a 5236 in a 5034. And with the introduction of the 5440, we also brought in a, an 1134 cassette. So 1130, uh, 32, I guess, used to be our biggest. The 32 used to be the biggest cog in the back. Now we have this new 1134 that was brand new with this um, with this 12 speed system. So you still get the different gear ratios, whether you're on the high end or the low end. Um, you just have um, a bigger chain ring option in the front, which this for sure came from the the world tour guys and and women asking for you know bigger chain rings because the speeds just keep getting faster and faster and faster. So um, this allows us to achieve all the different um, gearing options that people are asking for. Um, that's the Durace crank, um, the rear derailleur and front derailleur. Nice pictures. 
<laughs> um, and then here we get to the, the power meter. So we offer a double-sided, uh, a dual-sided power meter that's integrated into the crank. Um, so when you are considering buying a 12-speed system, you can either choose a standard crank with no power meter and have another one installed from a third party, or you can buy our power meter, which comes with this um, dual-sided power meter. And um, and I've been using it, of course, and um, and Angela, you have as well. So it's a I would say amongst our athlete, it's definitely the most. So our power meters are definitely sought after. Very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, enhanced braking system, uh, just a lot more control and modulation offered with this braking system. Um, yeah, a little bit in the weeds there. So kind of skip through that, but are most people on using disc brakes now, or do we have any rim brake users still? We probably do have some rim brake as well, but I think yeah. the majority are moving over obviously. But... Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It, and um, we do still offer rim brake options. Um, our athletes are, I think a hundred percent off the top of my head, a hundred percent of our athletes are on disc brakes now. And, and obviously just offers greater braking power. And for me, the big, one of the biggest differences is in, um, like rain where you can, you're confident <laughs> that your brakes are still going to work where if you been in rain on rim brakes sometimes you're you're not so sure especially if you're descending or um coming to a stop after like a high speed sprint or something like that so and i promise you once you go disc you will never want anything nope. else <laughs> nope. i i 100 percent agree with that <laughs> yeah um, and along with the 12 speed, we all also introduced new wheels. Um, so redefined road race, racing wheel system. And along with that, um, we introduced uh, three different rim widths. So we have a C36, a C50, and a C60. These are all carbon wheels that are tubeless compatible, meaning you can make them tubeless if you want to, or of course you can still use a tube if that's what you prefer. Um, and with the different rim depth options, this is kind of what you get. So the C36 is because the rim um, width or depth is shallower, it's going to be a lighter weight wheel. Uh, and usually lighter weight translates to a good wheel for climbing. The C50 is, is probably one of the most uh, or one of the best all around wheels. Like if you're, if you're doing a little bit of climbing, a little bit of just high speed, um, whether it's descending, climbing, breakaways, sprinting, whatever, I would say the C50 is the, the kind of the most versatile. And then the C60 is a really, really stiff wheel for those who are sprinting, or it's a great front wheel for uh, tri time trials and triathlons. Because of course, it's a little, it's a little more aerodynamic than the other two. So those are the three different um, wheel options that we offer for the Durace um, group. And then as we move into Ultegra, there's really not a whole lot that's different. The ha, Historically, Ultegra has always kind of followed in the footsteps of Durace. So whatever Durace offers, Ultegra adopts that. There's just differences in weight, some of the materials that Ultegra is made out of, to to reduce the price of that group so but it it still offers all of the technology that durace does it might just be different materials and 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 some places to reduce the price um so you can see you know it, it looks very similar to durace um the shifting uh all the ergonomics everything is going to be the same However, the one um, difference with Ultegra is that we do not offer the 5440 chain rings. So 5034 and 5236 are the biggest chain rings that we offer with Ultegra. So anyone doing time trial or triathlon, a lot of our triathletes um, are running a 5440 or bigger, um, sometimes a 56 or even a 58 chain ring in the front. Um, and you can, you would only get that with Durace, not with the old Tegra system. Um, but, but I'll tell you, pushing a 5440 or bigger 
is is massive. Um, I'm not doing any triathlons or um, I'm traveling, yeah, so time I don't need uh, that living uh, here in Colorado. Whatever, whatever. I run a 52.36 and that's more than enough, especially with the 11.30 and 11.34 cassettes. Uh, we also knew with the 12 speed um, system, introduced a power meter with Ultegra that that is new. Um, and it's, again, it's a dual sided power meter. It's exactly the same technology as the Durace power meter. So nothing is different. It's just a Durace crank versus an Ultegra crank, but the power meter itself is the same. Um, braking uh, and the wheels um, actually there's not a picture of all of them here, but again, it's the same three different wheels options. There's the C36, the C50, and the C60 that we offer in Durace. We offer those same rim depths in Ultegra. Again, it's just a slightly different um, weight, whatever, and the way that the wheel is made to reduce the price between Durace and Ultegra. Um, they're actually a fantastic wheel. Um, the C, 36 can also be used, still used with 11 speed. It's the only, it's the only 12 speed wheel that can be used with 11 speed. So you can put, um, well, I actually use it on my, my, uh, since our gravel systems are still 11 speed, I use that sometimes as a backup wheel on my gravel bike with the 11 speed system. Um, and last thing, since I'm sure we have some triathletes on the call, the one thing that we had that has stayed the same is the front end. Don't worry about all these numbers and everything. Basically, this is just to say that the front end of a TT or a triathlon bike is still 11 speed. So none of that has changed from um, the 11 speed system. However, what you do then is use an adapter to go from an 11 speed wire to a 12 speed wire because the back end of the bike is 12 speed. So it gets a little confusing. <laughs> um, and if you, I mean, if you have questions, you can ask Angela, or if you are, you know, looking to update your system to 12 speed um, and you have a, a TT or a triathlon bike, you know, you, you can talk to your local bike shop about how to make it all, all work together. But um, I hope, I hope eventually, you know, we'll be moving to a 12 speed wireless system in the front end for triathlon bikes at some point as well, so that we don't have to deal with these wires anymore. But I, I, I don't know when that day is going to come, but hopefully it comes sooner than later so that you can just eliminate um, all those wires on, on a triathlon bike as well. So that is the end of, um, the the duration Altegra presentation as i mentioned earlier we now offer a 105 di2 group as well um and again it adopts all the same technology that is trickled down from durace um and it's just it's different materials and weights and all of that that are used to help reduce the price of that group set so um all our DI2, we also still offer uh, mechanical groups as well. So if if you're not ready to go to DI2 and have to worry about charging a battery and all of some of the pains that come along with an electronic group, um, you, you do still have a mechanical option as well. So any questions? I know I breezed through that pretty okay. quickly. I'm just curious in general, what is the biggest difference between 105 Altegra Endurance. Like if someone's trying to decide to upgrade their bikes, what is a dis a deciding factor? Is it just weight? I would say weight is probably the number one thing. Yes. Um, with, I, I'm not, I'll have to admit, I'm not quite as familiar with 105 because it's not something we offer our, our athletes. So I don't usually deal with 105 that often, but there's some chain, some things like in with the Durace and Altegra shifters, um, there's coin cell batteries to, to, to make them wireless. You still need some sort of battery in there. Um, and there's coin cell batteries in the shifters that I don't think like a 105 system uses, um, so weight is definitely going to be a big one. Um, and I would say from like 
one or five to Durace, you're definitely going to to notice a big difference from one or five to Ultegra, and then even from Ultegra to Durace, those changes are are so so minimal um, that most people want Durace, but they couldn't really tell you why, other than it has like a sexy name, <laughs> and it's the highest end you know group, so that's just kind of what everybody wishes for. But Ult I actually just got my husband um, a 105 group um, for one of his sort of like winter bikes, I guess. And he is like blown away at how good it is. And he, it was like all he could talk about for weeks after he built it up. So, and he, like I said, has been, he's been racing, I don't know, since he was a teenager and has been in working in the bike industry even longer than me. And I, you know, I would, I was surprised at how much he was excited by the 105 group. Because it, it's just, again, it has all the same technologies and everything. It, it really just come, I, I do think it comes down to the weight. There might be a few things that you're missing here and there, but then on the, at the, on the flip side, a 105 group um, offers an 1136 cassette that the Durace and Ultegra groups don't offer. Not that you can, you can mix and match all of it. It's just that an 1136 cassette is heavy. And so most people don't want that on a uh, on a lighter weight group but if you're lit if you live in a hilly area like myself an 1136 is kind of a nice option to have for all the climbing um is it really easy because i i don't i obviously don't know because i've been with you guys um if someone were to go into a bike shop and wanted mm -hmm. to upgrade their equipment or get 105 or get very particular specifics that you were you were outlining is it hard for a bike shop to actually get that stuff or is it no, pretty quick. No, so, it's funny. I've I've just been listening to this podcast that um talks about how that bike industry got itself into the sort of deep trouble it's in right now. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, inventory is a big problem, not getting it, but getting rid of it. Um, we had this huge bike boom, you know, during COVID where more people started buying bikes, more people, more bike brands were ordering product, manufacturing product, all the things. And then, of course, people went back to work, um, kids went back to school, you know, the people who bought a new bike because their old bike had been sitting in the garage collecting cobwebs, they got the new bike and they're like, oh, great, I have my bike. Now I, I don't need another one again for another, you know, 15, 20 years. So demand dropped off and now a lot of um, bike companies are actually left with more inventory than they know how to deal with and they can't get rid of it. Uh, so companies, small bike shop owners are having, are struggling with how to stay in business. And so if you need product, <laughs> go into a shop because they'll probably have it. <laughs> Chances are very high that they'll have that, um, product. So, um, it's not right now is a good time to find product because it's pretty readily available. Whether it's online um, or you have a local, you know, business dealer, local bike shop near you, you can go into the bike shop and and they can help get you set up. Uh, cool. I didn't. I didn't know that. <laughs> I mean, I, knew that. <laughs> I know it's hard. Like it's it's yeah. It's in a where the bike industry is in a kind of a rough yeah. place. So so I definitely would say anything you can do to support your local bike, any local bike businesses, um, please do because. It, 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 yeah people are really struggling there's been a lot of businesses that have gone out of business because of it mm -hmm. yeah um okay we had a few questions uh and maybe you could touch a little bit on grx um yes. but is grx considered to be equivalent to altegra tier quality or what is it and then maybe you could just talk a little bit about yes it. yes and i um so i actually can pull up another so i'll answer that question first so yes so GR, we were the first company to launch a gravel specific group called GRX. Um, and it's been around for a while, for, you know, five or six years. It, it, it came before me coming to Shimano. So I want to say it's like five or six years, six years, maybe. And uh, we do offer a mechanical group and a DI2 group. Um, and when we launched GRX, it was, it was, it has been kind of Altegra level because that was sort of the, the audience that was the customer. Um, no one was like racing quite like they are now with gravel, you know, wanting these super lightweight groups. And it was kind of the, the, 
you know, the blue collar group, you know, out there on the, on the gravel road. So, um, it's a, it's a very durable group. Um, we, here, let me see if I can pull this up, um, and stop sharing real quick and I'll pull up my, cheers, my United in gravel. Um, you guys see the United Gravel? Can you see that? Yep. yep. Okay. So like I said, we have um, both mechanical and 11 speed or DI2 11 speed. And then last year we launched 12 speed mechanical. Um, and we, alongside that, we launched a new campaign called United in Gravel. We feel that's very fitting for the kind of gravel space where it's a lot more welcoming, inviting, um, choose your own adventure type riding, a little more so than like road or, or mountain bike can be. Um, and, you know, we we talked a lot about who is the GRX rider, why mechanical first, um, DI2 is coming, but we launched mechanical first because believe it or not, it, it, it is actually the most, um, most people want mechanical over DI2. Um, if you've used DI2, you probably are like, what? It's amazing. Why would I ever want to use mechanical again? Um, but mechanical offers, uh, because when you're out on the roads, if something happens to your mechanical group, it's a lot easier to fix where sometimes a DI2, you, you break a wire or something like that. And your system is done. Like, unless you happen to have a spare wire in your pocket and you have the ability to rewire your bike, you're, you're probably, you're probably done for the day. <laughs> you're going to be calling somebody to come pick you up from the side of the road. Where is if you have a mechanical group and somebody at least is knowledgeable about bikes, they can probably nine and a half times out of 10 fix it on the side of the road. So mechanical is still um, kind of a coveted a group. And then with the GRX 12 speed, we also um, offer the single uh, one by option or a two by option. And we call this um, unbeatable, unstoppable and undroppable for the different groups. So the one by 12, we offer with a 1045 cassette, we call this unbeatable. It pretty much allows you to do everything um, that you need to do in all different types of terrain, all different types of elevations. Um, and especially, you know, for anyone going high speed, I, I would say probably on flatter type terrain roads. Um, whereas with uh, the 1051, which we call unstoppable, this is where you can go out and you can get over any mountain pass. You, you know, you have such a wide gear range that that 1051 offers that you, you're like, choose your own adventure. And with the one by, so we offer a 1045 or the 1051 cassette. And then in the front, we offer either a 42, 40 tooth chain ring or a 40 two tooth chain ring. Um, and this is with the, the RX 820. We also offer RX 6, uh, 600 series and those offer smaller chain rings. And we can get to that if there's questions about that. And then finally with the two by, we call that undroppable. This, I would say most people running a DI2 group are running a two speed, a uh, two speed two by um, system, but however, with mechanical, because we've now introduced that wider range cassette in the back, um, if somebody is choosing to go mechanical, they're probably running a one by system. Um, when DI2 comes, you know, then these people, will, they'll, you know, continue to use a two by system. And, and I would say that choosing a, a two by system or a one by system, I think from, having conversations with various people, a lot of it depends on their background. So if they're coming from a mountain bike background, they're used to being on a one by system um, and using and, and used to having that wider range cassette in the back, where if you're coming from a road background, you're likely coming from a two by system and a smaller range cassette in the back where the gaps between each shift are smaller. And so you're more likely to find kind of your sweet spot where when you have bigger 
gaps or jumps between your shifts in the wide range set. Sometimes you're like, oh, that's too small. That's too big. I want to be right in the middle, but you don't have that option. And so it can, some, some people just that you don't like that, that feeling of like, you just can't ever find that, that sweet spot. That's really comfortable for the cadence that you like to pedal at. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot that goes into choosing a, a one by or a two by system. And, and part of it is just your preference for how you like the, the shifting to feel. And then some of it is dependent upon the kind of riding that you're doing and whether or not the cassette or the system will give you the gear range that you need to, to do the kind of riding that you do. I just had a, a quick question. So on my mountain bike, I have a one by and on my gravels, I have two by typically. Have you ever had any issues of heard people dropping their chains on the one by in gravel? Um, oh, I'm for gonna, sure. I mean, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Pe people drop chains, um, you know, on two, probably more on one by systems than two by. And so that's why they use a lot of times they use a chain catcher. Um, and also, which I haven't gotten to yet, we also offer a, a, de a rear derailleur that has a clutch system on it, which just means it, it basically tightens up the tension in the chain so that there's less slap and bounce on the, on the cassette and the chain ring. So there, it, it's less likely for the chain to come off, but yes, it, it does. It, it can happen. I mean, with some of the gravel riding and the terrain that we're riding on these days, um, it's hard sometimes to not let that happen, but that's why that, that chain catcher, the chain guide that's attached to the front derailleur, um, help really helps mitigate any chances of your chain dropping off. And then would another benefit be like for, for unbound last year, all that mud, <laughs> did you yeah. hear of anyone having a lot of issues with a two by versus a one by because the mud would get stuck in that? Like, I know when I was going through it, there was just mud everywhere. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, for sure. There's advantages of both, um, in, in mud sections like that. And I would say that, yeah, a two by system, you're probably going to have more challenges, I guess, in mud, in mud, because you, you are shifting the front derailleur and there's more chances of either the chain coming off or just, you know, mud getting stuck in places. It's, it's more simple. It's a simpler, a one by system is more simple, right? So you only have to manage the rear end and riding in muddy conditions Sure, you have to have skill. You have to, you know, to some degree, have to you have to know how to how to ride in the mud. But a lot of it also comes with managing your equipment and knowing how to baby your shifting or feather your shifting or you know, like maybe you could ride a section, but I better not because I need to protect my equipment. So I'm going to run or walk instead. So. There was a lot of that that come, came into play last year for sure with, you know, people who were having issues um, may not be as experienced in the mud to just know how to to manage equipment. Um, and then some of it, yeah, came down to whether or not you were using a one by or a two by system and, you know, one by definitely, I would say being more simple. Um, but, and then even then, if you want to go a step further, you know, saying like a mechanical option might've been the best because, you're not dealing with the the mechanics of an electronic group that are having to overcome the mud and all the gunk that gets built up and all and it's having to work that much harder for every shift. So for anyone doing a, a 200 mile race, you know that motor is getting worked out too. <laughs> um, you know it's it's having to do a lot of work to overcome all the resistance from the mud that's building up. So a mechanical group might just be even more simple um, in a situation like that, where, like I was saying earlier, you can stop on the side of the road and kind of mend a mechanical group in ways that you can't always do that with an electronic group. Okay. Uh, um, if you wanted to keep going with this one, that'd be great. Yeah. So, I mean, this gear ratio stuff. This is, this is technical. This is kind of getting in the weeds. If anybody's more interested in that, um, we can go back and talk about it. But I mean, this, this just kind of goes a little bit more in depth about the, the GRX, um, technology and, and this in particular, 
um, mentions the rear derailleur, which is the Shadow RD Plus, um, which basically means that clutch system, which helps um, reduce chain slap and chain re and improves chain retention um, when you're in kind of muddy conditions or going over a lot of obstacles where your chain is jumping around a lot. Um, we also improved the ergonomics when we launched this 12 speed group. So, um, you know, where your hands sit, I don't like to wear gloves. So for me, it's a lot more comfortable, um, where I sit on the hoods and we also, um, so you can see in that top picture, just the, the little bit of grip, because I mean, it's nice to have that in, in on a gravel group where you're likely in riding in all sorts of different conditions, whether it's dusty, muddy, sweaty, you know, whatever it is. Um, and oh, uh, the other thing going back to this, so the other thing that's popular in gravel riding is flared bars. So instead of having handlebars that are um completely vertical now the 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 drops of the handlebars are what's called flared so you can have anywhere from i don't know like six degrees of flare to 30 degrees of flare so they come out really wide and the ergonomics of these shifters now you know really match the the flare of the handlebars so that it's you know it's kind of uh, so it's not forced, but it actually, it pairs well with the flare of the handlebars. Um, I mean, this is all just, yeah. Um, w with the, with GRX, we also have um, gravel specific wheels that pair with the GRX system. So it's also a, a carbon wheel. Um, and it has the internal width of a, of the GRX wheel is 25 millimeters, which just means that it holds a wider tire better than what our road wheels do. Our road wheels are 21 millimeters internal. And so you don't want to put a very wide tire. Like it's not uncommon in gravel for people to ride a, a 40 mil tire. I mean, that's wide, that's really wide. Um, and so you wouldn't want to put that on a road rim because you just have more chance, more risk, more chances of it blowing off the rim where um, a gravel specific or a wider internal rim is going to hold a wider tire a lot better so that you don't have those issues, especially if you're going through a turn at high speed or anything, it's not going to roll off the rim. Um, yeah, so little more specific. So, so this is essentially what the, the GR, GRX group looks like. You can see the one buy option, the two buy option, um, sort of those nice flared ergonomics of the, of the GRX levers. Um, and then this is the RX 610 system. So it's also 12 speed, again, just like Duration Altegra. Um, this is, you know, a lower level, so it's just going to be a little bit heavier. Different materials are going to be used in, in making some of this and especially the cranks. Um, but with the 600 system, you get an option of a 4630. Uh, I don't think I mentioned that. So for the two by or the RX 810, um, you get the 4831 are the front chain rings. And with the 610 system, you get a 4630. So you get an either, um, even smaller chain ring option and even a 4038. So um, you can use it either an 1134 or an 1136 cassette with the, the two by or same the 1045 or the 1051 with the, the one by, sorry. The one by system, you can, the, the sorry, <laughs> getting myself confused here. So with the one by RX820, you have either a 40 tooth chain ring or a 42 tooth chain ring option. And with the RX610, you have a 40 or a 38. So again, just smaller chain ring options for um, um, people who like to spin more or, um, and also a shorter crank length for the RX 610 that we don't offer with the RX 820. 
I know I'm throwing out a lot of numbers here. So <laughs> yeah. what's the what's the crank lengths that you guys offer now in terms of the whole mix for both GRX and the gravel? I mean the gravel side and then also the trap on yep. side. So actually with the, on the road side, so for Durace and Altegra, we now offer a, we go as small, as short as a 160. So that was new when we introduced the 12 speed. Um, surprisingly, it hasn't been quite as popular as I we thought it would be. Uh, people were definitely asking for it, or I should say at least our athletes were asking for it. So I thought there would be a big shift towards the 160. There hasn't been as much of a shift as I thought. People are definitely going shorter for sure. More people now are using 165s than I think ever have before. So we order, we offer a 160, 165, 167, 5, 170, 172, 5, and 175. That's for durational Altegra. Um, for GRX, it's a 170, 172, 5, or 175 for the RX 820, so for the higher end group. And then we do go down to, a, a, I believe, a 165 for the 600 series group. Do you have any general recommendations for crank length and height? Ooh, no, I honestly, I don't know. I was just curious your thoughts. I used to, I used to think that there was a correlation. I mean, of, of course, the taller the person, the longer their lever arm. So the longer you want your lever arm of your crank to be. However, I have seen people, I'm 5'8". I have traditionally used a 172.5 crank. I am now in the process of switching to 165. Um, and I have seen people who are six feet and tall are starting to make that switch. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't think I can necessarily say there's a correlation between crank length and, and height. Um, I think it all depends on the person's position on the bike, depends on any sort of hip or back issues they might have. Um, it depends on if you're on a road bike or a TT bike. Um, I think there's a lot of different factors that go into it that a good bike fitter can, can help somebody decide, you know, which way they want to go. Do you guys have Shimano specific bike fitters like do you guys do any of that I'm not sure if you do we do um I I can get rid of that now um we do um I there um we do offer bike fits and uh, bike shops that are specific Shimano dealers so they if I think if they opt in for the training and they have the systems it's kind of like you know, the equivalent of a retool system, if oh. anyone's done retool fitting. Um, I think it's it's bikefitting.com. So a, a, a bike shop that is a Shimano dealer may have opted in to do, to get the equipment to be able to do bike fits. Hmm. We, we had a quick question. I just wanted to, so we're on the same page here. What is the advantages of shorter cranks and why are people going shorter? Um, have you made that switch? And you, cause you, you I, just went yeah, right? I've been 165 for eight years. A long, a <laughs> as soon time, yeah. as I could so get out of the switch, I have not. Yeah. Um, I would say that, um, a lot of it is just ability to open up the hip. So obviously we're in a very tight position. There's a lot of flexion when we're on the bike. And so by opening up that, that hip angle, so we're not sort of as, as tight you're getting, well, there's advantages to that of just not constricting vascular, you, you know, your vascular system, your muscular system. Um, I can't speak real scientifically on that because <laughs> I'm not a bike fitter, but that that's just some of the things that I've heard. I know for me, I have uh, pretty bad back issues on the bike. And so when I'm in that flexed position, and the tighter that hip angle, um, I'm hoping that by going to a shorter crank and I can open up that hip, hip angle, it it helps alleviate some of the back pain, the lower back pain that I that I feel. Another thing that I've noticed too, um, just I ride with my husband a lot, is that I I tend to spin a faster cadence than he, he does anyway. But I've noticed that my cadence has gotten even higher. And and I think most people will always say that's a good thing to have a higher cadence than mashing. Um, and when we're going over climbs and stuff where I can just like kind of spin up a climb, you know, he's still just mashing down on, on a bigger gear. Um, we might even be in the same gear or I feel like 
I don't even have to shift um, as high into the cassette as I have in the past because I can maintain a faster cadence than I was before. So I looked at, I've looked down a couple times and I've been like, oh, I still have two gears left on a climb that I know I normally uh -huh. all the way at the top of my cassette um, or, you know, close to it. And I still have a, an extra gear than I thought I did. How that all works out, I can't necessarily explain. That's just sort of what I've been experiencing <laughs> as I've been, um, you know, trying the 165 cranks. Um, this is an off, off, off topic one. Do you know, or if you can guess, how long Shimano will continue to offer mechanical group sets for road, gravel, and mountain bike? I have no idea. <laughs> I feel like, I mean... I was talking to someone this morning about, okay, so we're at 12 speed now. Campy has launched 13 speed. So you can imagine that at some point, 13 speed is going to be coming for, you know, the rest of the world. Um, and then what do we do after that? Do we not have a chain anymore? What's the next big seismic shift, you know, that <laughs> that's going to come. And um, so at some point, Will even DI2 be obsolete? I don't know. So it's hard to say with mechanical. I know that we feel it's important to keep mechanical um, for the time being. It, like I said, it's still a sought after group. Not everybody wants to make that shift to DI2. Five years from now, is there going to be the next big thing? And that means mechanical just, it's not even in the conversation anymore. I have no idea. I, I really, I don't know. I feel like, like I said, our engineers, you know, people want it. So as long as people want it, then I see, I foresee us making it. Mm -hmm. Lindsay Long had a question at, and Lindsay, I don't quite understand it, but you, if she's asking, can you just not utilize all 12 gears? Um, Lindsay, if you want to ask that, I'm not quite sure what that is, or you can tell me. Oh, for a TT front that up can you just not use all 12 gears can you not use them or can you use them even though it's an 11 speed front end yeah Lindsay, you might need to come on board and ask that question <laughs> okay yeah about. so yes even okay. though even though it's an 11 speed front end all that really means is that it's still utilizing the 11 speed wires which is just a different diameter than a 12 speed wire um and it, and the the shifters are different and again, because it's electronic, all it means is it's it's just a um, it's a software firmware change that we have decided not to make yet. So they have updated the firmware so that the eleven speed shifters still work with the the twelve speed front derailleur and rear derailleur. So yes, you do get all twelve speed. All you have the option to use all twelve gears. If yeah, there's no there's no um, disadvantage to having. 12 speed in the back and the 11 speed shifters in the front. I had a quick question just in terms of travel. What do, is there any recommendation or thought process in terms of if you had electronic versus not what if you need to unplug things, take things off or just try to keep everything cohesive? What mm -hmm. would be your best recommendations? Good question. Um, I don't really think when I when I travel with my bike, I do unplug my rear derailleur. I don't touch the front derailleur because that's so protected that it, you don't really need to. The The rear derailleur, I I mean, I take my rear derailleur off and I I put it in its own little like bag. And um, <laughs> thanks, Monica. <laughs> um, uh, so I do take the rear derailleur off and because I take it off, I have to unplug it. So there, there's that. Um, but otherwise there's, really no difference i would say now the biggest difference is whether or not people have an integrated um like proprietary integrated front front end like a cockpit so with so much of the um integrated cables and whatever happening in the front you can't just take your handlebars off and turn them to sort of fit in your bike case so it's i did for a race and really snafu my entire race <laughs> yeah yeah so it's a uh, it's a it's a thing like it's nice it looks sleek when you can have everything hidden you know in your handlebars and everything but it it is not fun when you have to pack your bike so and there really isn't that not that many bikes where you can really take off the like 
I, I mean, keep the front end intact for road bike or like mountain bike. Uh, you mean it? There's a few the, putting it into the K. Oh, you mean just because yeah. of proprietary stuff? Uh, yeah. Like if you had a whole integrated top end and you and you yeah. needed travel, like you want to keep that intact. And mm -hmm. so trying mm -hmm. to find. Yeah. Like, so now, I mean, have you guys you know, ever thought about creating that? Because I know Shimano bike cases, you have to fold everything take it off. off. Yeah. I don't, I, it's a good question. I'm not sure if Pro is, and so those of you who don't know, we, Shimano also owns two other companies. One's Laser Helmets and the other is Pro Components. So Pro makes handlebar stems, seat posts, um, saddles, all the different accessories like tools, saddlebags, um, all bar tape, so much stuff. Um, and they also make uh, bike bags for traveling. And right now they do not make one. Like the first time I went to a triathlon event, I, I've never seen bike cases so big because they, they make bike cases where you don't have to disassemble the front end. Um, I'd never had needed one of those before. So I'd never seen, or I should say seen that many of them in one place. It was crazy. Um, but it makes sense. People, I mean, on a, on a tri bike, you don't want to have to take everything apart even more so than a road bike. Um, so I don't know, good question if Pro will make a, a bigger bike case. I I kind of feel like as if bikes keep trending towards this integrated stuff that there'll be more bike bike bags coming out to allow people to travel without having to dis disassemble the front end because you, you just can't, you really yeah. can't. <laughs> yeah. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? You can either open up or put them in the chat. Sorry if I went through that all of that really fast. I know we oh, we talked about fair. a lot. So um feel free to if you think of any other questions that come up after the call, um, you can send them over to Angela or we can arrange another mm -hmm. Zoom call or something like that. But yeah, and if you guys time. are interested in changing or upgrading or doing different gears, just send me an email and if I can't answer it or I'll confer <laughs> and make sure. Yeah, yeah. And and I'll say too with the with any with our cranks. So let's say you purchase a crank that has 5236 chain rings on there. You can change them. So um, if you want, if you know you're going to go to a really hilly area, you can get 5034 chain rings to put on there. And then you go back home and you put your 5236 back on, or you're going to do a triathlon. So you want the bigger 5440 or whatever. So those are all compatible. Um, you don't have to just stick with what comes with the bike you can change your cassette you can change your chain ring so there are different ways to change your gear ratios for whatever type of riding you're doing awesome yeah um mm -hmm. I, I will mention you did mention um you, something about shoes and footwear i'm not, i mean footwear and eyewear i'm not going to go into that but i will say that ride.shimano.com um i'll put that in the chat um is where we do offer um direct to consumer um shopping experience so with our drive trains that kind of stuff hard goods that is not available on that website but on ride.shimano.com we do now offer the ability to buy footwear eyewear and a few accessories um direct to consumer and we and did just a lot, yeah a lot of people don't know that shimano has eyewear but i go i got lucky and i got all of the different styles and they I, they're awesome. So they have off-road road T and off-road road and gravel. And it really does make a difference with the different lenses, but. Mm -hmm. And we also offer a, a, a photochromic lens. So one that changes, you know, with the light and whatnot, um, and a lot of different colors we offer with the new, uh, eyewear that we just launched is called Technium or Technium L. The Technium is full frame all the way around. The Technium L is half frame. So it's just across the top. And, and each um, one of those models, we also offer um, the different lenses that that Angela mentioned. Uh, I like I like the full top because of the sweat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the full frame better also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think we launched some, we introduced some fun colors as well. So yeah. just, just be the standard white or black or, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And then um, in footwear, you know, we have all the road options. We have um, mountain bike options from any everything to like clipless to to flat pedals where you're not clipping into your pedal. Um, and then we will be introducing a new tri shoe tri shoe coming very soon as well. So we oh. hadn't updated our tri shoe <laughs> in, a, in a quite a long time. So <laughs> we were overdue. So that that's coming. Cool. Oh yeah, okay. and gravel shoes. Yeah, great. Thanks, Lindsay, for that reminder. <laughs> we also offer gravel specific shoes, where which are just a, a slightly different, a little bit different from the mountain bike shoe, and that they both have like lugs or whatever underneath the shoe. Um, but the you know mountain bike shoe offers like you can put um, spikes in the toe, so people who are racing cyclocross or whatever in muddy conditions, they have that ability to kind of dig in front end of the shoe um the gravel shoes are you know meant to be a little more adventurous and you know you're going to be off your bike hiking or walking a little bit more than maybe on a on a mountain in a mountain bike shoe and the gravel shoes lighter hmm. so some some people choose to even if they're riding mountain bikes they choose to ride the gravel shoe just because they like a lighter weight shoe cool yeah anyone else have questions or anything all right. Well, thank you very much. That was awesome. Um, yeah. And I will make sure to send questions if we have any and sure. welcome to come anytime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have an, a, an event or anything coming up anytime soon? Getting ready for it? We have a few members doing the gravel camp that we're hosting. Um, so that's Crow 10, uh, yeah. 2050, 100 and 150. Nice. Um, yeah. So I know there's a, a number of us going there. Um, Good. We, we, we have awesome. a good diverse of everything everywhere. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, I wish everybody best of luck and have a great season. I know it's just starting to get underway and I'm excited. This is always a, a, an exciting time of year when you see people who are on new teams or, you know, just you get to see everybody, you know, after months of having the off season or whatever. So I, awesome. I like this time of year. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Uh, yep, no problem. Awesome. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.